One of the services that we're hearing a lot these days that comes from Cisco is Cisco Spark. And in this video, I want to show you what Cisco Spark is all about. A very generic definition would be that Cisco Spark is Cisco's cloud-based collaboration solution. In other words, collaboration services are evolving much like data center services. Remember the days when we used to have data centers in our company, and now maybe they're living out on the cloud somewhere. We're using Amazon AWS or something like that. Well, we could do something similar with our call agents. Maybe we've got a cluster of Cisco Unified Communications Manager servers at our site, well, what we could do instead of having call agents at our site, we could just subscribe to a service where call agents lived in the cloud rather than at our site. And that's what Cisco Spark can do for us. It can allow us to, if we want to, get rid of the Cisco Unified Communication Managers at our site and simply let Cisco's Spark service act as our call agent. And Cisco calls that cloud collaboration management, where we can go in and administer voice and video services at our site that's being controlled by a call agent out in the cloud. Some of the major features of Spark include, well, one thing is messaging. You could use this as an instant messaging client. And it works on the major platforms like Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, on your mobile devices like Android, Apple iOS. In addition to messaging, it can also work with WebEx, to give you an interface to go to meetings. You can use it for calling one another. So you could set up a video call or you could have an audio call. It's a way to share files with colleagues as well. And you could also be uh, having a message with someone and say, hey, let's bring up a whiteboard. Let me illustrate what we're talking about. And here's a glimpse of some of the clients I was telling you about. We see on screen uh, the iPhone and the iPad interfaces. You could also have a Spark board, which is one or here we have a couple of Spark boards in a meeting room somewhere. And maybe you have this shared whiteboard or this shared document show up on the Spark board. And you can write directly on the Spark board and people that may be on another location tuning into the meeting on their iPad, they get to see the annotations you're making on the board. But there's a concern I'm hearing a lot from my collaboration students. A lot of collaboration students are concerned that Spark will make collaboration studies irrelevant. They think that companies are just going to be using Spark, why do we need to learn Cisco Unified Communications Manager anymore? Is that still a relevant technology? Well, let's talk about that. Let's ask the question, what about Cisco Unified Communications Manager or CUCM? Let's understand that there are a couple of ways of deploying Spark. We could have a cloud-based deployment where the entire call agent intelligence lives in the cloud. And we're not saying that everybody has to use a Spark client to get to this service. No, you could have some of Cisco's newer phones. You could have the 7800 series phone. You could have an 8800 series phone like this one. A couple of exceptions, the 8821 and the 8831 are not compatible with Spark. But for the most part, 7800 and 8800 series Cisco IP phones, they can register with the call agent out in the cloud. And if you've never seen it done, it's, it's pretty awesome. You're in this cloud collaboration management interface, and you say you want to add a phone. It says, all right, who's the user? And you say, here's the user. And you don't have to type in the MAC address like we're accustomed to doing on Cisco Unified Communications Manager. No, it gives you a code that you can just key in in the phone. Or notice this phone has a video camera. It gives you a QR code. So maybe you're on your mobile device and you're adding this phone using Cisco's Cloud Collaboration Management Interface, it shows you this QR code. Literally, you just boot up the phone, you hold the QR code in front of the camera, and it registers. That's pretty slick. But we don't have to get rid of CUCM. We can have a hybrid solution. We can preserve our existing investment in Cisco Unified Communications Manager and enjoy all the services and configurations that we have with it while still using Spark. Spark can be aware of what's going on with our Cisco Unified Communications Manager system. And honestly, I don't think Spark is going to replace having a Cisco Unified Communications Manager solution at our site. I compare it to the way the telephone industry was back in the 1990s. I remember at that time, lots of businesses had their own phone system on site. They had these PBXs, private branch exchanges. But some companies didn't want to pay the money for a key system or a PBX. So what they did, they paid the phone company to do all the call processing for them. It was called a Centrex solution. You could subscribe to this Centrex service, and instead of having this big PBX at your site, no, you could just use the Centrex service, which was hosted by the telephone company. I think that's a lot like this. It's a lot like Spark. 
We could have some companies that say it makes more sense for them, easier management, less expense, to use Spark in the cloud-based approach where everything's done in the cloud. But if we want some additional control, maybe some additional features that perhaps we can only get with a Cisco Unified Communications Manager and how we're integrating a Cisco Unified Communications Manager with maybe our call center or our messaging applications, we might say it's better to have the traditional call agent intelligence on site. And maybe we want to do a hybrid deployment where we can still take advantage of Spark at the same time. So I personally don't believe that Spark is going to get rid of a Cisco Unified communications manager, I think they're both going to be great collaboration solutions. They're just going to have different use cases. And now that we've talked about some of the Spark theory, let's go out and take a look at a Spark client running on my Mac and also running on my iPad. And we'll see if we can send a message and make a call. And the great news is we can get started for free. There's a free service where you can download the app for your mobile device or for your computer. You can set up a free account and you can start using these services. Let's take a look at that now. Here we're taking a look at the free Spark client running on my Mac and also on my iPad. And right now I've got a chat going on with myself. I've got two Kevin Wallace accounts. You see that they have different pictures on them. That's who I'm chatting with and this is me. And we see that I've already sent some messages. Let's send another one just to illustrate. I'll say hello from my desktop. And you can see that that shows up on the iPad. And then I'll say, hi from my iPad. And I press send. Oh, by the way, as I did that, I got a message on my Apple Watch that I was wearing. It vibrated to tell me that, oh, I've got a Spark message. So it shows up on your Apple Watch as well. So we can do some basic messaging. We can also attach files. Notice I've already attached a file here. We could just click on plus and attachment, and then we could browse our computer to attach a file. And if we wanted to see the files that we have attached, we can go up to this little area and select files. And here's the file that I have attached right now. We could click on it to view it. We could also organize things a bit and have different spaces, and we can have teams. Uh, to give you an idea of a space, that's an area where we can have a conversation and people can join a space. But to give you an idea of how it can be used, as I record this, it's June 2017. And coming up later this month is Cisco Live US out in Las Vegas. And I'm presenting one of the sessions out there. And after the session, and I think they're doing this for just about all the sessions, there's going to be a Spark Room which is really a Spark space set up for attendees of the sessions. So they can start some discussions in that space and I can respond as the presenter of that session. So it's an area where people can talk about a common topic. We could also have a team. For example, if I click on the Teams button, right now I've got a team of Cisco admins. Let me add a new one. Let's say create a team and I'll call this CUCM admins. I'll create the team. And notice that we can have spaces within Teams. I can say I want to create a new space here. There's a general space already. I want to add a team member. I'll click on Members, and I'll add a team member of my other account. And I'll say Done. And when I do that, this team suddenly becomes available on my iPad. And we can have a conversation within there. If I don't want to create a team, just from the Messages screen, I can say I want to create a space. Here's how we would do that. We could also set up a call. We can set up a video call or we could mute our video if we want to, where it's just an audio call. But let's say that I want to set up a call and I'm going to call this user and it's going to be myself. So let's try this. I'll say call me. And I'll accept it. And now we can see and getting, and getting a little bit of feedback. Let me turn this down. I was hearing a lot of feedback, lot there. Of feedback there. I'll go ahead and disconnect the call so we don't have to listen to that. But you can see that we've got video going bi-directionally. So let me tap on this. And I could mute my video if I wanted to. I'll go ahead and disconnect the call, though. Because that audio was just a bit annoying. I hope that didn't bother you. And it asked me to rate the call quality. Now, that's a quick overview of Cisco Spark. You can go out and download this app on your mobile device, Android, Apple. You can download the application for Microsoft Windows or your Mac OS, and you can set up a free account. Now there's an option to have a paid account, and with the paid account, you can integrate this, I think like with an Active Directory server in your business, 
It's going to hang on to files that you share during a session. There are a few enhancements for the paid option, but if you just want to experiment with Spark, you and maybe one of your coworkers or friends could go out and each set up an account. And you can try to start messaging and calling one another using Cisco Spark.